Hey you, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini PC known as the GD70 from a company known as Codlex. Obviously, very odd name, but one thing I'd like to mention here is this is the sister brand to Menace Forum. I was not aware of this until I got this into my possession. I started inspecting the unit itself, and I kind of noticed a lot of cues coming over from Menace Forum's design. But this is their new GD70. 10 cores, 16 threads, and a super small form factor. Just taking a look at the rear, we've got a pretty massive cooler here for that CPU they opted to use. And in this video, we've got a lot to cover, but before we jump into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Overall, we've got a very minimalistic design, nothing too crazy here, a little bit of a plain Jane mini PC, but this should definitely be a workhorse given the specs we have here. And inside of the box, along with the GD70 mini PC, we get an HDMI cable. This will also support a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom of the unit. It comes with all of the mounting hardware and cabling we need. It also comes with a mounting bracket and our 120 watt power supply. Taking a look at the overall I.O. Up front, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two USB 3.2 ports. Moving around to each side, not a lot going on here, but we do have some ventilation for this 10 core CPU. And of course, around back here, we have our power in, USB type C, full size HDMI, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, a full size display port 1.4, and two USB 2.0 ports. Overall, not loaded with IO, but I think we've got enough to get by. And when it comes to the overall specs for the GD70, for the CPU, we've got the Intel Core i7-12650H, 10 cores, 16 threads, and with this, we get six performance cores up to 4.7 gigahertz, and four efficiency cores up to 3.5. Built-in Intel UHD graphics up to 1400 megahertz with 64 execution units. You can add up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM at 3200 megatransfers per second. I've got 32 in here. A single M.2 NVMe SSD, and this is a PCIe 4.0 drive. You can also add one 2.5 inch drive in the bottom. It has Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and we're going to be running Windows 11 on this mini PC. Over on the Amazon listing for this, it states that the USB Type-C port around back is only 3.2. Really hoping, got my fingers crossed that we've got Thunderbolt on this, and we will test it once we get in there. But I did want to give you a look at the internals. Actually, really easy to get in here. We've got four screws on the bottom, plus some rubber feet we need to pull off. And remember, we can add that 2.5 inch drive right here to the bottom panel. Comes with all the hardware and cabling necessary. The PCIe 4.0 NVMe drive in here is a one terabyte. It does come with a pre-installed cooler. And we've got dual channel DDR4 at 3200 megatransfers per second. Now, I'm hoping for some decent iGPU performance, but we're not working with a super powerful iGPU. Either way, I think we can definitely get some older games out of the way, and just everyday desktop use should be great on this PC. All right, so here we are. Been up and running, got everything installed, everything updated. Uh, as you can see, we've got that Intel Core i7-12650H, 10 cores, 16 threads, 32 gigs of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, We've got the built-in Intel UHD graphics. Now, one thing I was really hoping here for was, uh, you know, Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. Unfortunately, that USB Type-C port is only 3.2. Now, one thing I always like to check out is just total package power here. I haven't messed around with any of the settings or anything like that. And uh, over here, I've got Core Temp. We'll see our TDP from that CPU right here as soon as I put a load on it. We'll stress it out with CPU-Z. 54 watts. 
Now we're getting those clocks that we need uh, up on the CPU, especially when gaming, but we could definitely use a little more here when we start stressing out that iGPU. Either way, I think, you know, up to around 60 watts should be pretty sufficient for this little PC. When it comes to using this as an everyday PC, web browsing, email checking, uh, you wanna do some photo editing and even light video editing, you shouldn't have an issue with it whatsoever. We're just gonna head over to the Intel website. Everything loads up very quickly. And we are using Wi-Fi 6, but we also have that 2.5 gigabit ethernet port on the rear, so remember that. I mean, most people out there who use these mini PCs or even their desktop are online all the time. And you know, when it comes to web browsing and things like that, this has plenty of power. And when it comes to 4K video playback from YouTube, I've always had really good luck with these UHD graphics. We're gonna pause this. Make sure we're full screen, stats for nerds, and of course, we want to make sure we're at 4K. So 4K, 60, HDR. Up in the top left-hand corner, we've got our drop frames. This chip isn't going to drop any frames when it comes to YouTube 4K video playback. I mean, it is a super smooth experience. And this transfers over to other websites and other apps, so Netflix, Hulu, and even native 4K video playback from the internal drive or an external. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks we ran on this thing. And the first one here is Geekbench 6. Single core, 2,393. Multi, 10,560. Given that we're running at up to around 60 watts, not bad at all, but this little chip could offer just a bit more with those higher clocks. And from the BIOS, we could up that wattage, but I wanted to keep it stock just to see what it would do. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks with 3 d Mark Wildlife coming in with a 10,398. And the last one I ran was Night Raid with 15,215. So we're not working with an ultra powerful iGPU like some other mini PCs on the market, but you know, some people aren't looking for gaming. I personally love to test out gaming anyway. So we're gonna go with some lower end stuff to see how it handles it. Now I knew something like Minecraft was gonna run well and uh, you know, indie games like Hades, you're gonna be able to run this just fine. We're at 1080p, not many other settings that we can change with this game. Still looks really great here. And even if we had to lower the resolution, it's still such a fun game. I wouldn't mind playing it at 720. But we're at 1080, running at 60, really great performance. Older Valve Source games are going to run great on this little machine. Here's Left 4 Dead 2. You can go through, play some Half-Life 2, uh, even CSGO at 900p medium settings would run pretty well on this. Right now we're at 1080 medium and we're getting an average of 197 FPS. So yeah, I mean, this older stuff, not a problem. Same thing with one of my favorite games of all time, Skyrim. 1080, medium settings, and uh, we're really not even stressing out that CPU. You can see from Afterburner, our GPU clock or iGPU clock does boost up to 1400 megahertz. We're at 60 right now, medium settings, and uh, we're only drawn up to around 28 watts from this Intel i7. Obviously, the games we've already taken a look at were a bit older or easier to run. I wanted to throw at least one AAA game in just to see what this thing could do. So here we have Cyberpunk 2077, 720p low. And if I went ahead and just locked this at 30 FPS, we could have a pretty decent time with it. I'm actually getting an average of around 38 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077 on this Intel UHD iGPU. Another thing I always like to monitor with these mini PCs while doing all of my tests is total system power consumption from the wall. So while testing this thing out, I've got it plugged into a kilowatt meter. And at idle, it's drawn 11 watts from the wall. 4K video playback jumps up to 16 watts. Average gaming, 52. And the maximum that I could get this to pull was 76. And usually with these Intel PCs, we can pull a lot more. But the way the BIOS is set up on this thing, I mean, it's not going to draw over 80 watts from the wall. So it is relatively low power when you compare it to other PCs on the market. For everyday normal desktop task, this is a great little mini PC. But I wouldn't pick this up specifically for gaming unless you know you're only going to be doing indie games and older stuff. It would have been really nice if they included Thunderbolt with this PC. That way we could connect an eGPU and really up that iGPU performance. But you know, this isn't marketed as a gaming PC, more of an office or a student PC. And for that, I could definitely recommend something like this. 
They do offer a few different storage and RAM configurations over on Amazon, and if you're interested in learning a little more about the GD70, I'll leave some links down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.